Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to give an update on how everything went yesterday. I didn't take any video in my MRI arthrogram. I was way too nervous, way too anxious. I thought about it a couple times, but I even took the volume and I'm not sure that the volume actually worked. My husband swears that it did because I didn't actually like freak out, freak out. And so maybe it worked out a little bit. Not sure how these things get addictive since I didn't feel anything. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to, if you're supposed to feel anything or not. But anyway, I didn't even really feel tired. I think the most tired that I felt was just because of the anxiety and then what happened in the arthrogram, which my experience for the MRR arthrogram wasn't very pleasant. I have now had three MRIs done since this injury, one on my knee, one on my hip, and now an MR arthrogram done on my hip again. And so I'm just gonna walk you through how it went. We got to the appointment at 1245. I had a 115 appointment. I had to fill out some paperwork, scary paperwork to explain to me that this could happen, this could happen, it's very rare, blah, 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 but all of these things could happen and they just have to let you know and then you sign it and you're like, okay, find my life away. And so I literally was nervous as all get out about doing the arthrogram after signing those papers especially. And then I had to wait in the waiting room for like 20 minutes before they came to get me. And luckily I wore everything super comfy. I wore my most comfortable sweater, which is what you saw me in yesterday in my um, video. And it was just so comfortable. It's like my blanket, like it's so amazing. I love it. And so I wore that yesterday and they asked me if I wanted to keep it on. And of course I said, yes. So they took me back to this room where, first of all, they had to inject me with the dye before I could do the MRI. And so the guy who was doing the MRI, I can't remember what he said he was um, exactly, but he said that he was like, I've done this procedure for 20 plus years. Everybody's nervous, because I told him I was super nervous about it. And he said, well, you're just like every other person that walks through the door, super nervous. And he goes, I'm just gonna walk you through everything that I'm gonna do first. First, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm gonna clean the area and then I'm gonna um, give you lidocaine and then I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. So he's like, I'm gonna do two separate times of anesthetic. First, you know, layer, second layer, and then I'm gonna put the eye of the needle in for the dye, inject you with the dye. <clears throat> All the while I'm looking on this x-ray thing he says that shows me exactly where the joint is to know that I'm actually putting the dye in the joint where it's supposed to go okay I'm like cool so he's like don't worry about it and I told him I said I took a volume but I don't think it's <laughs> kicked in and he goes well when did you take it and I was like literally an hour ago like right now and he said well it takes about an hour to kick in and I'm like cool so I'm like on the verge of it kicking in I guess so he then says to me, okay, you know, lay down, breathe. You know, the best thing you can do is breathe. He was like in through your nose, out through your mouth, because the more you breathe, the less it'll hurt. And if you tent up, the more it'll hurt. And I'm like, makes sense. I can't see what's going on because the x-ray machine that they put me under to see the joint is like eight to 10 inches away from my body. And so I'm laying there and I'm thinking to myself, oh my word, this is gonna hurt so bad. So they tell me to breathe, that I'm doing okay, and I literally, I think about this now afterwards and I'm kind of like, that was a little weird, but I'm doing this. I'm just like laying there and I'm like rubbing my chest like this and I'm breathing in and then I'm breathing out and they're like, okay, you're doing great, you're doing great. And I, the entire time I'm just rubbing my chest and I'm like, this may seem a little weird, this may be something that people have done before, but maybe not. <laughs> I don't care, it helped. It helped me just to rub my chest and just to just be like, yes, yes, you know. So he goes, okay, here comes the first uh, anesthetic. I'm, you know, it's gonna be a little pinch, a little pinch, it wasn't bad. And then he goes, okay, here comes the second one. He goes, it's gonna be a little bit deeper, a little bit more pressure. 
And that was very true. A little bit more pressure. He's like, okay, and now I'm going to inject the dye. He goes, I got to go all the way to the joint. And then he goes, okay, I'm going to go all the way to the joint. And I like screamed when he said all the way to the joint. I literally like both of my legs just completely flew up and I screamed because he hit a nerve. He hit a nerve while inserting the needle for the <laughs> injection of the dye. And he was like, oh my goodness, what was that? And I was like, I don't know. I said, but it hurts. And he was, I said, it went all the way, shot all the way down from my hip, all the way down to my knee. And he goes, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I think I hit a nerve. Let me move that over and we'll try again. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and at this point I'm like, this is even worse. I'm like going faster and faster. It's like rubbing my chest, like to make myself feel better. And I'm literally like freaking out because I'm like, what if he hits another nerve? He's like, okay, we're gonna try this again. So he goes back in. He was like, are we good? Are we good? And I'm like, we're good. <laughs> and he goes, okay, well now here comes the injection of the dye. You're just gonna feel like completely just full. Like your leg is just super full and super like tight. And I was like, yep, that's happening. And he had, he felt so bad. I mean, I wasn't mad because it was like, how can you see a nerve? You can't see a nerve on an x-ray machine. All you can see is joints and x you know, and bones and all that. But he was like, every person is made differently and I'm so sorry. You know, he's like, it's very rare and you got the rare case. And knowing me and my, my life, I always get the rare case. I mean, there was a time where I had my wisdom tooth te teeth taken out. And the, this one back here was so like far up into my skull, basically, he had to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. And he goes, I just, the, the orthodontist was like, yeah, I had to go in and, and, and just dig. Well, literally 24 hours, maybe 36 hours, I started seeing like this red spot coming down my cheek. And uh, my, my face was so swollen on this side when I would bend over. I literally would feel fluid in my cheek just moving around. Well, come to find out, I had an infection in my cheek socket. I didn't eat anything for a really long time because it hurt. I could only open my mouth like a finger wide and I, the only thing I could literally fit in there were like Cheetos and like grilled cheese and toast and soup was kind of hard anyway because just any kind of heat or really cold really bothered me. And so rare case, I go back into the office two days later and they, well, first of all, I went to the hospital to, to see if there was like, you know, if, if I was having a really bad infection that was like causing the red spread. And they're like, no, it's just in your cheek infection. And they put me on, it hurt so bad. They put me on um, IV because I was dehydrated. I was all get out. And um, my dad, who is all about like not going to the doctor, he said to my mom, he goes, get my daughter to the hospital now. I was 27 when I got my wisdom teeth taken out. So, you know, I, I it was crazy. So, oh, and then that was the first time, the second time I also fainted. I had everything that could go wrong, go wrong, happen to me with my wisdom teeth taken out. So knowing my past and everything like that, I was back in the I was back in the uh, office two days later. They also put me on IV and told me, my mom to get me Pedialyte and all that kind of stuff. For an entire month, I could not open my mouth more than a finger width, like an inch. Yeah, it was awful. I would try. I would sit there and just go, oh, and try so hard, but I couldn't. Anyway, back to the story of how things go wrong. That's another one. So he's like, this very rare case. I hit a nerve. I was like, well, I'm always the rare case. <laughs> So they put me in a wheelchair because they don't want the dye to just start running everywhere apparently. So they put me in a wheelchair, wheeled me into the MRI. And it's a wide body because I'm claustrophobic. So they had me on a wide body uh, MRI machine and uh, it was a 40 minute long process. And they would put me up higher and closer into the machine this time. And I 
started to freak out, but then all of a sudden I was like, okay, maybe the Valium will take over. And I just started thinking, I'm on Valium. <laughs> and it was fine. So I listened to classical music. They wheeled me out because I literally could not lift my leg because of where he hit the nerve. I could not lift my leg. They wheeled me out to the car. And I read online before I went to go get it. I just wanted to see other people's experiences and all that jazz. And I read online that literally about four hours after the arthrogram that you're in a pain. And boy, is that true. But it started literally right after because of him hitting a nerve. But four hours after the MRR arthrogram, I was in so much pain. My husband had to keep like moving my leg. I couldn't lift my leg up by myself. He had to like bring me pillows to like prop up my leg. But it was like literally every couple of minutes, I just wanted to move my leg and I couldn't. And he had to help me use the bathroom and like get me to bed. It was just super painful and like it's still pretty painful this morning. I have a doctor's appointment at 11.15 today. I'll be able to see the results of the MRR. I looked last night on the computer. I could kind of, and then I was like comparing pictures on the internet of what an, a labral tear would actually look like with the arthrogram. And I could tell where that there was a labral tear. I was being willed out by the guy who did the arthrogram. And I was like, so do you see a labral tear? And he goes, I, you know, I can't, you know, I don't see that kind of stuff. And I was like, really? I was like, just like the doctors, they, they don't, they're not able to read, you know, you go through all this schooling and they don't teach you how to read this kind of stuff. And I was like, just like doctors, they go through all kinds of schooling, except if you're a specialist, then you could read it. But if you're just a regular doctor, you can't read it. He goes, let me just rephrase that. He goes, I'm not allowed to tell you. He goes, if you, if you want to pay me like a doctor, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I was like, oh, got it. <laughs> so I went and I looked down there and I could see maybe where there would be a labral tear. I'm not a specialist and I'm not, I'm definitely not a doctor. So I could see where there's a labral tear and I'm thinking to myself, this specialist better see the labral tear as well. I've got a hair, sorry. I was like, this specialist better see a labral tear as well that has never seen me, never talked to me, never done anything. Because if he doesn't, I'm gonna be super mad because I've had three MRIs now and I'm done. I do not want to do that again forever if I can make that happen. But yeah, so this morning I'm still walking around like a grandma. My husband took my car to work this morning so I could take his car. His is an automatic and mine is not. I have a Mazda Speed 3. I like to go fast. As my husband says, a mama goes fast. So I cannot push in a clutch today. And I am like, it hurts really bad. So that's my phone. I'm gonna go get that. <laughs> Hold on. I'm so glad I went to go get that because it was spam or scam, whatever. <laughs> spam, <laughs> spam email on your phone. Um, anyway, so yeah. So last night was pretty excruciating. I did not want to take a video last night because of how much pain I was in. So I'm sorry I didn't upload anything last night. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because my life comes before my vlog. <laughs> it's very true. Because, I mean, if I were to put this before my life right now, I don't know, you'd probably see some really ugly stuff. <laughs> um, speaking of like really ugly stuff, I mentioned yesterday about uh, going through depression right now. I do believe it's just a phase. I believe it's just a phase of me not doing anything. I'm home by myself all the time. I do go to brunch with some girlfriends every now and then. And you know, I do see friends. We go to life group on Thursday nights. We go to church on Sundays. So I do get to see people, but it's like the day in day out of, I'm home by myself. I'm left alone in my thoughts. And there's been a lot that's been going on lately. Um, my best friend, I think I've mentioned this in a, a couple of videos before, I haven't really talked much about it. And I probably should, this video is probably gonna be really long, and I'm sorry if you're not ready for like a 30 minute video, but 
My best friend, Emily, was killed in a hit and run literally two and a half years ago. And I, it, it oof, I can't even talk about it right now, apparently. Um, the case has been open for two and a half years. And so it's this whole entire two and a half year long case that, you know, is not closed. I mean, we had a life celebration for her and that was some sort of closure, but the fact is, is that this case is still open. And so there's still a part of me that still is grieving and there's still a part of me that knows that this case isn't closed and the closure isn't fully there. And that is actually coming to a close in April. And that is so overwhelming because literally I, I thought it would never come to a close. I mean, we've been hearing about a trial and then trials being pushed off. And then we've been hearing about a trial and trials being pushed off over and over and over again, new evidence, you know, she's, you know, anyway, so I, yeah, so that's coming in April and that was this past week along with like hearing two more of my friends who are now pregnant and so a lot went on in the past couple of weeks uh, in my Bujo, like I have a habit tracker. I haven't even been doing my Bujo lately. I have a habit tracker and I noticed that it had been like two weeks since I uploaded a video and I lost a few subscribers. That kind of hurt too because it's kind of like, oh shoot, <laughs> I've lost some subscribers. Like how does that happen? I, I don't know. So anyway. Yeah, so I have been crying at any moment. I'm, I'm not wanting to see people, even though I am such a huge people person. I am such a social butterfly, always have been all throughout my life. My mom told me when I was a kid, I never knew any strangers and she thought for sure one day that she would lose me to a stranger because I would just walk up and be like, hi, how are you? <laughs> and just have a long conversation with the stranger. But yeah, so I will make, it's funny because I'll make plans because deep down I'm a social butterfly. I'll make plans with people and then I sometimes just because I don't want to get out of my pajamas because I don't want to leave the house, I say, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do a rain check. And I'm sorry if you are a friend of mine and you have that, had that happen to you. I'm really sorry. I And you're watching these videos. Please know that it is not you. Please know that it is solely me and me dealing with this depression. It used to take me so long and so many like things to cry. I never really showed like my crying side because I was always such a happy-go-lucky girl and nothing really got me down. And now it's like I talk about something and I start crying for no reason. Like I said in my video yesterday, I haven't had any symptom or symptoms. I haven't had any thoughts about suicidal or about hurting myself or hurting others. It's literally just a numb kind of like, I don't want to get out of bed. It's like, I don't want to deal with life. Right now, my house is a complete wreck and I don't live this way. I am always keeping my house clean. I'm very prideful of how clean my house is. And I feel so bad for my husband who has been such an amazing, oh my gosh, he's been my rock. And he has been so patient with me. And I mean, he just lets me cry and he tells me it's okay. And even though he knows that it's not okay, but that it will be okay. And he just has been, I mean, he was there for me yesterday. He took me uh, to and from my appointment yesterday. He's done that multiple times where he's just like, hey guys, at his work, he's told his boss, hey, my wife is having like something done, I need to go. And they're like, sure, go ahead. Then they've been really great about it, which I'm really excited, like happy that he, at his job, he's able to do that and not have a job where he can't leave and I'm having to do all of this on my own. So I haven't been on my own. He's been really great. I am going to talk to my doctor today about my depression and see if there's anything, I'm, I'm not... A pill taker I'm not you know I think you know I, I don't really like doctors in the first place 
but I don't know if there's gonna be something that I can take, you know, to just get my life, my house <laughs> back together. It's funny because I, I sound really not depressed. That's like a MO for me. Like if something makes me feel uncomfortable or embarrassed about or just an awkward situation, I end up laughing. And so I, <laughs> I don't know what that's all about, but yeah, so don't take this as like, oh, you're fine, you're just playing it off or whatever. I am just dealing with life right now. And my poor dad, I love him to pieces, but when I got broken up with, I actually was engaged before my husband and I got married. I was engaged like three years with prior. And I like finally had a breakdown moment where I was crying and he was like, okay, don't have a pity party. You know, this isn't the time, you're fine, you're better off without him, blah, blah, blah. And I love my dad and I love him for it, but um, he like called me the other day and he's like, nothing is worth, you know, being depressed about. And I'm like, dad, I just don't think you get it. I love you, but deep down, I just don't think that he gets the whole, it's like, I'm not wanting to be depressed. First of all, I don't want like the attention of it. I don't want people feeling sorry for me. I just am, you know, that kind of stuff. But I did put on Instagram yesterday a picture right before I went to the MRR. And I talked a little bit about my depression and I also put it on Facebook. And for those friends and family who watch my videos and who commented, I just wanna say thank you so much for your encouragement for your prayers. Like I said, I cry at any moment. It is so awesome, even when you're in a depressed state, knowing that you have friends and you have family who are there for you, who back you up, who don't judge you, and who just love you for who you are, depressed or not depressed. Um, I got so many people just texting me yesterday, calling me, sending me messages on Facebook. And it was so uplifting, like that helped out a lot right before I went into my MRR. And it was just, I know I'm not alone in this and I am so thankful for that. I really don't know like what I would do if I didn't have such an amazing support group. And then I have you guys on uh, my vlogging. I know I have very few subscribers and that's okay. I'm not in it for like a million subscribers, even though it's fun when you get a new subscriber. It's always so fun because it's like, oh my goodness, they actually want to like know what's going on. But yeah, I am, uh, making it day by day. And I also found this little guy the other day. Does anybody remember these? Or does anybody still have one of these? I found this the other day cleaning out one of our closets. I, I During this depression, I'm going through this like purge stage where I just feel like everything needs to go. Like I need to just start spring cleaning. I, today's the first day of spring. <laughs> and so I'm just feeling like I need to just clean and get everything out of my life. And I don't know if that's just a reflection of how I'm feeling inside like I want to get this depression out like I want to just like clean and make a fresh new start but yeah I found this guy and I'm so glad that I did oh my word it's brought back so many memories it's made me want to go through my journal for whatever reason I don't know why but it's bringing back a lot of memories I guess because I would write in my journals when I would listen to this iPad iPod and I yeah so this was awesome, fine, I don't know why, I just felt like I needed to say that to you guys and talk about that, but maybe I'll do a video about like going through my journals and you guys can see what type of teenager I was. And I started journaling when I was 11. And there was, I think my first entry was literally about how I saw this guy, cute guy who is, I'm 11, okay? And this guy is one of the cashiers, so he's what, like five, six years older than me? I literally wrote in there, I was like, so I saw this really cute cashier at the store today and he was looking at me and I was looking at him and I think he likes me. 
you go right here, thinks the boy likes her, <laughs> 11 years old. Woo, my mom had problems, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my mom and dad were like, oh gosh, this girl's gonna be pregnant by 17. No, anyway, I grew up in a Christian home, they probably didn't think that, but anyway, just because I like boys, I was not pregnant at 17. There's a bunch of videos that I actually really wanna do. I just have to get around to doing them, guys. I really do, and I will do that. I will do a video about how Kelly and I met. I will do a video question and answer with Kelly. I want to do a video, I think I've already mentioned this, about what people shouldn't say to those who are trying to conceive. I just want to do so many different ones. So continue to follow, continue to walk with me on this journey. Thank you so much for watching this video, even though it may be really long. I'm going to do a video about our St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, I took a bunch of Instagram, like short and I'm gonna put them all together. That was a really awesome day, really fun, and I will do a video on that one because I've never been in a parade before, I've never been in a float, and it was really cool to experience that, and maybe you guys wanna see that. So I'll do that possibly tomorrow. I will get everything like together tonight and just post it tomorrow, maybe. Don't, like, hate me if I don't. <laughs> so anyway. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna go to, it's 10.04. I'm gonna start getting ready to go to my doctor's appointment and I will update you guys and let you guys know like what the next thing is. I think the next thing is actually to get a steroid shot, which I will ask for another volume. Not sure that it worked. Don't think it did. But on the back end of like having another steroid, another shot into my hip, I'm not really looking forward to that. But I think that's the next step because then they say that after six weeks, this was my doctor's assistant, he said that after six weeks, if I'm still feeling pain and I'm still feeling not, you know, like the inflammation hasn't gone down, then we can fight for surgery again, which really makes me super nervous because of how uncomfortable I was on the couch yesterday just for like six to eight hours. If I have this surgery, I cannot put weight on my leg, on my foot for like two weeks. I mean, yes, I can get up and go and do and like, hop around, but I'm probably just going to be in so much pain and that's what they're telling me already. So anyway, I am just rambling on now. Um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed, once again, subscribe to my channel. Um, I will put up some pictures of like how I looked. If I can find those, I'm going to find those pictures of how I looked when I had my wisdom teeth taken out and just all like the puffiness and all that stuff. So It'll be really fun to look at. Okay, guys, thanks again. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys, I'm back from my doctor's visit and I got some pretty interesting news regarding my MRI arthrogram and I'm not super happy about it. So let me just read that to you really quick. I left it on the bed. Um, and so it says here, <clears throat> No appreciable left hip labral tear. The findings seen on the prior study may have been artifactual. I do have mild chronic thinning in the weight bearing portion of the left femoral head and the adjacent acetabellum. I have mild tendinosis of the left gluteus medius tendon laterally at its insertion into the greater uh, trochanter, unchanged. I have, where is it? Uh oh, it was probably in that. Anyway, so basically I don't have a labral tear. It does say that some things more acutely than the last MRI, but that is apparently stress related. So I went through all of that yesterday just to be told that I do not have a labral tear.
My PCP is telling me to make an appointment with Dr. Swan, who is the first specialist that I saw. After the first MRI said that it saw a labral tear in the actual writing after the MRI <laughs> in the results. He's saying to make an appointment with him and then to um, see what he says and to see where we go from there. Now he wants me to start doing therapy again, which therapy where I was going did not help. I would walk into therapy and then I would immediately afterwards walk out limping. So he's saying that I will go to an advanced facility and they specialize in all these kinds of things and then they will go from there. So I am now back to square one again, I feel. I cried all morning. I even cried in the doctor's office. I talked to him about my depression and he's saying this, his whole depression is situational that it is not, you know, he goes, I really do not want to put you on antidepressants. He goes, you are going to get through this. It's going to be fine. And he was like, just think that you're now not actually going to have a surgery that you don't need. And I'm like, wait, what? I've been told by three specialists that I have a labral tear. Why are they, why is this now saying that I don't have one? Like three specialists who have seen it in, like on the regular MRI, they're like, yeah, that's your labral tear. Uh, anyway, I am so down, like an out right now. I don't know, I don't know where to go from here. Apparently there may be a steroid shot along with therapy but I just have to see what Dr. Swan says and then we'll go from there, I guess. I just feel like I'm going through the ringer here, like another curveball after curveball. And I was telling Nick that I just didn't really, like this whole thing just sucks because Kelly and I have been trying to conceive and we literally put it on hold for this, thinking that I am gonna have surgery of some sort at some point in time because we're just following the workman's comp rules right now and just getting all the dotting our I's and crossing our T's done basically to then have surgery. So now I just am not understanding, not sure where we're going now. And he did say that having a pause on trying to conceive is actually a very smart thing. He goes, your hips are going to hurt as they are during pregnancy and you do not want any other pain. Along with that, if you have something going on with your hips, so he was telling me that actually waiting is a smart thing. So there you have it. <laughs> a doctor's opinion on me not trying to conceive is actually correct. So yeah, so I actually went through a bunch of photos and videos today. Oh my word. It was so fun. I felt like I was back in time when I was 23 again. And if you're lucky, if I feel like it, I will post a old video of me from like 23 and you'll get to see how crazy <laughs> I used to be. <clears throat> All right, guys, I am going to head out to dinner. We're going to meet a friend of ours and we will catch you later. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I promise I'll be doing those other videos here soon. Yeah, you can have that spot right there. <laughs> no. See, she's not the perfect angel that everybody thinks she is. No. Hey, come over here, come on, come on, come on, come over here. Do you want to be in the video? Is this what this is about? Okay, come on, come on my lap. Okay. right now.
Where the cat? Oh yeah. I swear if you bite me, you're looking at, I'm looking at life <laughs> in prison for killing a cat. All right. Hey guys. I need to turn that off. You like that? Huh? Is that something you like? Do you want more? Do you want more? Okay, girl, good. Yeah? You know what you wanted? Oh, it feels so good. I can't handle it. It feels so good. Hey, we're getting down for a second because I think the music is too loud. Bye-bye to everybody. Bye-bye. My cat hates me, but loves me at the same time. She tolerates me. Hi, Mabel. Nope. That's not for you to play with. Okay, let's go turn the music off.